Here are the top stories for today, August 7, 2019. The PNP says it is validating the reports of a supposed terror threat in northern Luzon. Parents claim before a Senate panel that leftist groups recruited their children. Malacanang says President Duterte is still pushing for federalism despite it not being discussed by the cabinet. And the Labor Department offers insurance to laid off workers. Good day, I'm Rom Dulfo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story for today, the Philippine National Police is validating reports that terrorists are out to conduct attacks in northern Luzon. BNP Chief General Oscar Albayalde on Tuesday said while there is no confirmation yet from their on-ground team as to whether the threats will be carried out by the terrorist groups or not, the PNP will remain vigilant and continue to be aggressive in intelligence and information gathering. AFP spokesperson General Edgar Arevalo said they are also validating reports of possible terror attacks, especially in the business centers and churches in northern Luzon. He advised the public to remain calm and be vigilant by reporting any suspicious people and activities in their communities. Several mothers became emotional as they faced a Senate probe on the alleged recruitment of minors by leftist groups. They recounted how their children joined leftist legal fronts and eventually turned their backs on their studies and families. More on this from Miguel Hill. Three mothers claimed before a Senate panel on Wednesday that their children were recruited by leftist groups. Jovita Antoniano said her daughter was a stay-in student at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines who was recruited by the League of Filipino Students and Anakbayan. Antoniano's last communication with her daughter was on August 5, 2018. Relisa Lucena said her daughter, a student of Far Eastern University, joined Anakbayan and became an officer. When she left home for three days, Lucena reported the matter to FEU and the police. In response, her daughter denounced her and called her an enemy. The daughter eventually quit her studies then disappeared. Luisa Espina also told senators of how her child was recruited by leftist groups. The Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs is looking into the alleged recruitment of minors as members and fighters by groups with links to the CPP and PA. Senate Committee Chair Ronald De La Rosa said they have invited Kabataan Representative Sara Elago, several members of Anakbayan and the League of Filipino Students to the hearing but they did not show up. For his part, PUP President Emmanuel de Guzman believes only a minority is drawn into the communist movement. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde, meanwhile, said teachers are also participating in the radicalization process. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. Senator Manny Pacquiao on Tuesday urged the Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights to prioritize the hearings from the bill seeking to reimpose the death penalty for drug-related crimes. Pacquiao said it is high time for the state to step up its game and put these criminals to death through judicial sanction. He said that despite government efforts to dismantle Shabu laboratories within the country, Southeast Asia, including the Philippines, has been the fastest growing Shabu market in the world and that international criminal organizations and drug cartels have become more aggressive and well organized in the country. He points out most of these foreign nationals come from countries that impose death penalty for drug offenses such as China, Taiwan, South Korea, India, USA, Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. The Philippine Army says it will extend all the necessary security aid to the indigenous leaders who are now being threatened by suspected New People's Army members. This comes after the IP leaders exposed the exploitation and deception allegedly being carried out by the CPP and PA. Lieutenant General Makairog Alberto of the Philippine Army said Monday that they will provide security aid not only to the IP leaders but also to their respected communities. By Christine Banugan recalled her experience last July when she received messages from her family that they are being threatened by the New People's Army while they are in a speaking trip in the U.S. Banugan's father was a tribal chieftain who was killed by the NPA members in 2016. Datu Bawan Jacob Lana said they are victims of deception as their traditional leaders are being killed and their indigenous schools became a training ground for child warriors. 
Senator Francis Tolentino is calling for a more people-oriented solution in clearing up public roads. And the Philippine National Police comes up with a solution to airing cops. More on this from Janice Cavin. Senator Francis Tolentino on Tuesday reminded local government units to take a more people-oriented approach in their clearing operations of public roads. Tolentino, who chairs the Senate Committee on Local Government, is proposing to open roads of subdivisions to the public to ease the problem on traffic. Meanwhile, the PNP launched its 30-day reformative program for airing police personnel. PNP Chief General Oscar Albayalde said this is not a form of punishment but rather a restorative approach at internal cleansing. More than 5,000 police officers with resolved administrative cases since July 2016 until June 20, 2019 will undergo the reformative program. In other news, the Supreme Court on Tuesday ordered Mainilad, Manila Water and MWSS to pay a fine of more than 1.8 billion pesos for a violation of the Philippine Clean Water Act since 2009. Mainilad and Manila Water are said to fail their obligations to put up sewage lines and sewage treatment facilities which is mandated in RA 9275 or the Philippine Clean Water Act of 2004. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Still to come, Malacanang says President Duterte is still pushing for federalism despite it not being discussed by the cabinet. President Duterte says he will not impose martial law in Negros Island despite the spate of killings in the province. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. The Philippines made several historical milestones during the last three years. These milestones can be summed up in Standard & Poor's Triple B Plus rating given to the Philippines in April 2019. That's the highest investment grade in the country's economic history. The Philippines' game-changing reforms power the fast-rising economy and inclusivity. While we rank among the best performing economies in this dynamic part of the world, growth is not our final goal. Our ultimate goal is to bring down poverty rates and create more opportunities for all law-abiding Filipinos. The Philippine economy grew at an average of 6.5% amid rising global uncertainty, weak agriculture, and unstable world oil prices. We responded to the problem of elevated inflation rates by decisively implementing measures to increase the food supply. We expect to end this year with inflation well within the target range of 2 to 4 percent. Another first in Philippine economic history is the administration's comprehensive tax reform implemented without external pressure or economic crisis. The first package, known as train law, showed immediate benefits to the economy. For one, employees earning less than 4,500 U.S. dollars annually are now exempt from paying personal income taxes. Those earning above 4,500 U.S. dollars are now receiving about a month's extra take-home pay annually. The increased purchasing power of our consumers resulted in a strong growth in demand and an impressive rise in the profitability of companies involved in retail and real estate. In 2018, we exceeded Train's revenue goal collecting 108 percent of the annual target. This provided a solid footing for our infrastructure spending program. Infrastructure modernization will provide a strong stimulus to keep our growth rate high into the foreseeable future. President Rodrigo Duterte is still keeping federalism on his agenda. Presidential spokesperson San Panelo, however, said it is up to Congress to propose what method should be used in amending the Constitution. Panelo reacted to a remark that federalism was not discussed during the pre-legislative executive development advisory council meeting on Monday night. Panelo further said Congress should first agree whether to amend the Constitution by constituent assembly or constitutional convention or CONCON. Panelo, however, admits that if Congress would fail to agree on amending the Constitution, there is also the option of changing the local government code. 
Earlier, Panelo rejected claims that the president had abandoned his push for a shift to federal system of government since he did not mention it in his fourth sauna on July 22. President Duterte said he has no intention of declaring martial law in Negros Island despite the spate of killings there. The president clarified that he would never declare martial law except in Mindanao. The president, however, said he has to impose drastic action like deploying more soldiers to quell lawless violence in Negros. He stressed that martial law is foregoing after lawless elements and not innocent people. Presidential spokesman Sal Panelo said the president will not declare martial law to quell lawless violence in Negros Oriental. He clarified that martial law can only be declared in case of invasion, rebellion, or threat to public safety. A notorious drug pusher was killed while several drug users, including three cops, were arrested in intensified anti-drug operations in the provinces. Bench Bondo with the story. A notorious pusher was killed in intensified anti-illegal drug operations conducted in Bulacan on Monday and Tuesday. Albert Monacillo, alias Pugot, who was included in the unified PNP Pidea drug watch list, was killed after a drug transaction Tuesday noon. Police identified Pugot as a known supplier of illegal drugs in Baliwag and nearby towns. Twelve other drug suspects were arrested in a series of anti-illegal drug operations in the city of San Jose del Monte, Malolo City, and Calumpit Town. Meanwhile, three policemen in Cebu are under probe after they tested positive for drug use in a surprise random drug test last July 26 and 27. These are Police Corporals John Budamides Combis, Kinsman Getz Omolon, and Robert Gagatik Amasqual. They were currently confined in Camp Sotero, Kabahug. In Cotabato City, three utility workers at the Cotabato Regional and Medical Center were arrested on Sunday for using prohibited drugs. Suspects Angelo Fampome, Dimson Sevilla, and Jerome Cortez were caught in the act of sniffing shabu based on a tip from neighbors on their suspicious activities. Meanwhile, over 40,000 pesos worth of suspected shabu was also seized in separate anti-drug operations in Zamboanga Peninsula region. Suspected drug dealer Albasil Sayadi was arrested in a buy-bust operation Monday afternoon in Barangay Campo Islam, while four others were arrested during a buy-bust operation in Purok Verbina, Barangay Poblacion, Tampilisan, Zamboanga del Norte. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. The DENR intensifies the restoration of mangroves in the Calabar Zone area. Meanwhile, authorities raid a cockpit arena operating illegally in Cebu. More on these and other news from the provinces from Janice Cave. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources is encouraging local government units along the Calabar Zone region's coastlines to help sustain the mangrove rehabilitation program. Last July 26, the DNR joined more than 60 volunteers in a mangrove planting activity in Barangay Talisay, Kalatagan, Batangas, in celebration of World Mangrove Day. In Maguindanao, the provincial government led a relief mission in Sharif Saidona Mustafa in partnership with the Army's 6th Infantry Division and actor Robin Padilla. Some 1,500 families availed of medical dental services, Operation Tuli, and relief distribution. Padilla urged residents to help the government fight extremism. In Cebu, police are working to identify the owners of a cockpit arena in Mandawi City that was raided for illegally operating on Monday. Presidential Decree 449 or the Cockfighting Law states that cockpit arena operations are only allowed during fiesta celebrations, Sundays and holidays. In Pagadian City, residents were caught by surprise as the waves struck 10 houses at the coastal barangay of Dumagok on Monday morning. Barangay officials said they have yet to assess the extent of damage caused by the huge waves and assured the affected families that they will be given assistance. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Malacanang expressed confidence that the reduction in the inflation rate will continue after registering a 31-month low at 2.4% in July. Presidential spokesperson Sal Panelo said on Tuesday that disinflation will continue as the government monitors the prices of basic goods and commodities. Panelo said this shows the hard work and the strong political will of the president and our economic managers in reining in on the soaring prices of basic goods and services. 
Panelo, meanwhile, assured that the administration will continue to implement policies which will have a positive impact that can be felt by all Filipinos. The Philippine Statistics Authority attributed the downtrend of inflation to lower prices of food and non-alcoholic beverages, utilities, and transport. Up next, the Labor Department offers insurance to laid-off workers. The PNP looks into the link between a Philippine-based website and the mass shooting in El Paso, Texas. The PNP Newsroom returns after these reminders. Combined with better tax administration, the 2018 tax effort rose to 14.7% of GDP. This is the highest it has been in over 20 years. Improved revenues have been matched by improved disbursements. With its continued growth, the expenditure effort in 2018 reached 19.6% of GDP. This is the highest we have ever achieved in the past 28 years. Among the monumental legislative achievements of this administration is the passage of the Rice Tarification Act. This law has made quality rice more affordable and accessible to Filipino consumers, thereby bringing down inflation. Our development partners fully appreciate this administration's commitment to fiscal discipline and its determination to see our infrastructure projects done at the soonest possible time. A strong inflow of assistance allowed the administration to finish projects faster using less funds. Even with infrastructure loans, the Philippines managed to bring down its debt-to-GDP ratio to 41.9% in 2018 from a high of 74.4% in 2004. In 2017 and 2018, the Philippines received a total of 20 billion U.S. dollars in foreign direct investments. For two consecutive years, our foreign direct investments averaged 10 billion U.S. dollars a year, double the inflows we received in 2015, which was around 5 billion pesos. This is unprecedented. The administration's trabajo bill is created to corporate income tax rates and rationalize fiscal incentives. With all these positive developments happening in the Philippines today, the people are beginning to feel the rewards. The fact that the Philippines has one of the world's youngest median age in the workforce supports the Philippines' impressive economic momentum. The Philippine economy is strong and ready to soar. We have momentum on our side. We expect to perform even better in the coming period by rapidly modernizing not only our infrastructure base, but also the policy architecture that will make possible sustained and inclusive growth. The Labor Department encourages and voluntarily laid off employees to apply for unemployment insurance. The program covers eligible SSS member employees, including Kasambahay and overseas Filipino workers who were involuntarily separated from work. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III said the issuance of a certificate from DALE is included in the guidelines to avail of the involuntary separation benefit. The certification must be secured from the DALE field or provincial office where applicants reside or from where their company is located. The workers must have been involuntarily separated due to authorized causes such as redundancy, retrenchment or downsizing, closure or cessation of operation. Other individuals that are eligible to file are those who lost jobs due to just causes or due to an economic downturn, calamities, and other similar cases. The Health Department has declared a national dengue epidemic. The declaration took place after over 146,000 cases were, were recorded since January to July 20 this year. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said the reported cases are 98% higher 
compared to the same period in 2018. There are also 622 dengue deaths recorded this year. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana, as NDRRMC Chair, ordered all member agencies to support the nationwide dengue epidemic response. Western Visayas has the most number of cases, followed by Calabarzon, Zamboanga, Peninsula, Northern Mindanao, and Region 12. With the National Dengue Epidemic Declaration, government agencies, schools, and communities will conduct the Sabayang 4 o'clock habit para dengue out campaign to destroy breeding sites of the disease carrying mosquitoes. The Philippine National Police has ordered its anti-cybercrime group to conduct a probe on a Philippines-based website that is being linked to a mass shooting in the U.S. The website HN, which allegedly posts racist posts and commentaries, is reportedly owned by an American living in the Philippines. It is being linked to the mass shooting in El Paso, Texas, which left about 20 persons dead. PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde said part of the verification is to come up with all the technical details on how the website is being run for proper action. He also expects the ACG to come up with the details regarding HN's operation in the Philippines. Meantime, Albayalde assures strict gun control measures are in place to prevent incidents such as mass shootings. In our foreign news, South Korean officials reported on Tuesday that the Democratic People's Republic of Korea have fired more projectiles. This is the fourth weapons test done in over a week. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said North Korea fired two short-range ballistic missiles from the western part of the country. Officials believe this is North Korea's response to the joint military exercises between South Korea and the U.S. In continued efforts to restore Marawi City, residents are given the opportunity to have their homes rebuilt or repaired. The National Housing Authority has opened applications for housing at the city's most affected area. Sweet Lukman with the story. The displaced residents of the most affected area after the siege can start processing their applications for the repair or construction of their houses structures beginning July 30. Through Katagumbalay, we will start processing the applications for the renovation of building permits for the residents of Sector 1 in most affected area, said Task Force Bangon Marawi Field Office Manager and Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council Assistant Secretary Felix Castro Jr. A one-stop shop will be established at the Marawi City Hall for the processing of the applications with the Office of the Building Official from Tuesday through Friday at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. The applications are required to bring documents such as land titles and deeds, plans, zoning receipt, barangay clearance, and Bureau of Internal Revenue Tax Clearance. The names of the applicants will be screened against the Katanor list and National Housing Authority's list of beneficiaries for permanent housing. Applicants should also submit house tag from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. After the screening, the applicants will submit applications for renovation of building permit from OBO, electricity application for Lanao del Sur Electric Cooperative Incorporated, and water application for Marawi City Water District. All applications will be evaluated by OBO. Once the building permit is approved, the TFBM and the Marawi City Government will be informed of such and NHA will now monitor the repair or construction of the structure. After the repair or construction shall have been completed, OBO will then use an occupancy permit and the return of MAA residents will be scheduled. For PNA Newsroom, Sweet Lukman, Philippine Information Agency. In our weather news, Hannah has intensified into a typhoon as it moves slowly over the Philippine Sea. According to Pagasa, the outer rain bands of Hannah will bring light to moderate with at times heavy rains and gusty winds over the areas under tropical cyclone wind signal number one today and tomorrow. Moderate to heavy monsoon rains may affect Metro Manila, Ilocos Region, Cordillera, Zambales, Bataan, Rizal, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Occidental Mindoro, Oriental Mindoro, and Northern portions of Palawan including Calamian and Creo Islands. While light to moderate with at times heavy rains may prevail over western Visayas and the rest of Luzon. Those living in areas identified to be highly susceptible to floods and rain-induced landslides are advised to take precautionary measures and coordinate with local disaster risk reduction and management offices. The western sections of Luzon and Visayas will experience occasional gusty conditions due to the southwest monsoon. 
Hana remains less likely to make landfall on any part of the country, and it is expected to exit the Philippine area of responsibility on Friday. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. The PNP says it is validating the reports of a supposed terror threat in northern Luzon. Parents claim before a Senate panel that leftist groups recruited their children. Malacanang says President Duterte is still pushing for federalism despite it not being discussed by the cabinet. And the Labor Department offers insurance to laid off workers. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, check PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of latest news and information that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dufo. Good day.